the sun is out. So there we go. That is exactly what I came for. That's on the rag on the bottom hook of the torpedo rig. Time to get it cast out. We've done it. We have another lovely little place there. Cool. Way. Another place. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. The sun is out at last. It's not ideal place conditions, but it's not far off. It's a beautiful day. The sea is calm, but sadly still a little bit coloured. However, it's the best conditions we've had in ages. So we're definitely in with a chance of some place today. That's what I've come here for. I'm fishing at Shoreham and I'm going to be trying some different tactics, mostly fishing at distance with the torpedo rig. And I've also got uh, some rigs with a shorter snooze with me that I'm going to be chucking in a bit closer with a plane lead. See if we can pick some place up there. So let's take a look at what bait I've got today. We have some really old oiled and salted lug that I've dug out the depths of my freezer when I cleared it out yesterday. So we give them a go. And we also have in my little cool bag some frozen razors and in here some lovely fresh rag that I picked up from Tony's Tackle in Eastbourne yesterday. So three different kind of bait, hopefully it'll all stay nice and fresh in the cool bag there. It's not too hot today, in fact it's about one degree when I got out of my car just now. So yeah, we'll get some baiting up done, chuck some bait out and see how we get on today. So we've got baited up, the torpedo rig's ready to go. Got a five ounce uh, grip lead on the bottom there, that's an SKM grip lead. I've put a king rag on the bottom hook and one of them frozen, oiled and sorted on the top. And I've also got a little pop-up bead there just above the, the black lug on the top one. Add a little bit of movement, which the place like. So let's get this chucked out. We're gonna chuck it out, maybe 100 yards if I can do that. I forgot my thummy today, which is a bit annoying. So I'm gonna to have to make sure I grip the spool really well with my finger. Let's get the drop length right. That's about right for me. We'll get this one launched. And see how we go. Loosen them mags off a little bit next cast. I think last time I used this reel there was a really bad cross, sort of side, slightly side on, sort of side to the side headwind. So I must have tightened them down a bit. Loosen them off for the next one. Hopefully get a bit more distance. Well, there we go. So I've got the Tronix Pro Blaze 20 pound line on there which is pretty thin for its breaking strain. So you can get a nice amount of line on your reel. And get that benefit of the increased strength. Not that you really need that for place fishing. <laughs> so I've got that one rod chucked out now. I'm gonna set the other one up in a minute and that'll be the one I'm gonna stick the hybrid lead on a little bit closer in, see if we can pick anything up with the lead that's gonna move just a little bit more than a grip lead but it should stay nicely in position though because of that hybrid design. I'll be able to move it myself a little bit just by reeling in, reeling in, see if I can find the fish. And yeah, so that's the plan. But this is what, about my fifth, sixth video now from fishing down the beach, is that true? Five, fourth one maybe, I don't know, I've lost count, it's so many. <laughs> but if you're coming back to the channel and you've watched some of the earlier videos, thanks ever so much for returning. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And I'd like to ask you, please, please, please uh, do subscribe to my channel. It really helped me out with keeping going. I've got lots of plans coming up. So I'm off to Norway later in the week and I've been busy all week preparing for that. So this is the first chance I've had to go fishing for a whole week, which is not like me at all. I've got about 60 rigs made up ready for the Norway trip. And I'll be talking you through those when I'm over there. 
and we're going to be hoping for some cod. I'd really like to catch some place or dabs out there as well. You never know, maybe a halibut will come along, but it's, it's a closed season for them over there, so if anyone in the group catches one, we have to put them straight back. But it'd still be nice if one graced the beach, or graced the, the edge of the fjord, I should say, for us while we're over there. So yeah, that's what's coming up on the channel. So subscribe, and you'll hopefully get notified when those videos go up when I'm back, and I hope you enjoy them. So let's take a little look at the rig. I'm going to put the hybrid lead on. That's a five ounce hybrid lead. And it's going on the imp. That's at the bottom of my rig. If I can get that on there. Go on. Get there in the end. <laughs> oh, it's a fiddly one. It's a fiddly one. There we go, nicely on the bottom. And I've got Aberdeen hooks on this one, size 1.0. And we get this off the rig winder. Watching those hooks. Put the winder back down. So this is a two hook clip down. And I've got snoods on here about 18 inches. So that's the top snood there with that 1.0 Aberdeen hook and little bait stop, which is just a sequin and a bead with a rig gum stop holding it in place. And the bottom snood, that's also 18 inches. I've got the cascade swivel there in the middle so I can clip it down. And I'm hoping this is gonna pick some fish up, but we'll see. So the top snood's much shorter than I got on the torpedo rig. That one's about three foot, whereas this one's just 18 inches. And the bottom snood on my torpedo rig's 18 inches, so it's similar to this one. So we'll give that a go. So let's have a look at baiting up this clip down rig. I've got a couple of ragworm. In fact, that one's a little bit small. I might get another one out in a second. I'm just going to put these on the baiting needle. So I get that one on there. Just makes them much easier to get on the hook neatly, I reckon. I'm not the neatest person in the world, so any help I can get with making my bait presentation better, I'll take it. Right, so I'm just going to slide up that stop knot so I've got plenty of space between the hook and the stop knot for my worm. And let's get that slid on so I hold the line nice and tight. Slide that worm on. Just leaves that a bit of tail there. And then I'm going to slide that stop knot back down so it's just going to hold that worm a little bit too far. There we go. In place there. So there we go, let's do the other one. Getting my box nice and disgusting with worm juice, but I'll give that a wipe in a second. I don't want to sit on that and then sit in my car on the way home. I'd be in trouble. <laughs> well, we don't want to be in trouble. So let's have a look at where that stop knot is. So that's plenty of space for the worm to fit this time. I don't need to move it in advance. There we go. Actually, maybe that worm looks all right size now it's on the hook. There we have it, and I've slid that stop knot down again just to hold that in place on the cast. Cool, so we get this up on the tripod, get the line up the other rod, get it ready to send out. Not sure you can make that out, but there's a what looks like a canoe going past. <laughs> Lots of people paddling, keeping fit, nice to see. People out enjoying the sea. Let's wait for them to paddle past before I cast out. They're out a fairly long way. I don't think I'll hit them, but best to be safe than sorry. So now they've safely passed, I'll get my two up clip down sent out. Let's see what it brings. Not gonna whack this one. Probably put it about two thirds the distance of the first one. See if I can find the distance the fish are at. So it's low tide at the moment. It's about half nine in the morning. I'm hoping to be able to fish till about three o'clock. We'll see how the bait goes. Um, but I do need to leave because I've got to go to Gatwick Airport later to pick up my wife who's flying back from India today. And I don't want to be late because I'm sure she'll be really tired after a very long journey back from Goa.
exactly where I wanted it. Come on, Mr. Place. It's the best chance so far this year. The baits are out. We've got a chance. I'll just swap those rods around. So I don't have cross line. Oops, made that worse, didn't I? Don't worry, I only started fishing last year. <laughs> There we go. Nicely out there, let's wait for a fish. So I thought on this video, I might introduce myself a little bit as well. So we've known each other for a few videos and you might have seen me on some of Wayne Hand's videos over on the Shore Hunter channel. Well, he might have called me Dr. Jem. <laughs> More on that later. Um, but I've been fishing for over 45 years. Must be coming up to, coming up to 47 years this summer. So I've been fishing for a really long time. I started when I was three, when my dad took me and been fishing ever since. So you could say it's in my blood. So I'm just keeping an eye on them rods because I feel like today could be the day for the place. Um, yeah, so I've been fishing for about 47 years, which is quite a long time. And I fished for the England ladies team in, I think it was 2022 with the home nations where we won the gold medal against uh, Scotland, Ireland and Wales. So that was a really cool thing to take part in. And then last autumn, I also fished the EFSA England Shore Championships and I was the first woman to actually win it. So that was pretty cool. I was really pleased with that achievement and uh, that will stay with me forever. But most of my fishing, to be honest, is pleasure fishing. I'm not really into the, the matches so much. I much more enjoy getting out on the beach bit of peace and quiet, relaxing, chasing the species I want to catch rather than what's just in front of me because it's a match. Pleasure fishing is what I do and that's what you're going to see on the channel and hopefully we'll get some decent place out. Fingers crossed. Well I had what looked like a couple of very gentle little pull downs on the right hand rod. That's the one with the torpedo rig on. Not totally sure they were bites, could have just been the waves but it's been out there a little while. So let's reel it in and see if we've got anything. Certainly well gripped. Let's see. It's going to take a little while to reel in because I did chuck it out away. Feels a little bit heavy, but it might just be the grip lead dragging on the ground. It would be pretty amazing to catch a fish on the first chuck. Especially if it's not dogfish. <laughs> oh, I've had enough double shots of dog for a while. Yeah, I think there might be something on there. Let's see. We're getting near the edge. I'll just walk down. Nice and slowly. I don't want to let the line go slack. Oh, yes. I think we have exactly what I came for. Let's get my leader not in the right place. We have a place. Made a right little tangle in my rig but thankfully I've got another one baited up ready to go. So there we go. That is exactly what I came for. That's on the rag on the bottom hook of the torpedo rig. So I'll get this guy hooked, pop him in a bucket to recover and then we'll take a better look at him once I've got my other baits chucked out. Woohoo! So that place is now sitting in a bucket of water. I've unhooked him. And I've got my next torpedo rig ready to go out. This time I've put rag on the top. There's no pop-up bead on there. And the bottom hook, I've got some of that lug out with a little bit of razor fish on there. So let's see how this one goes. Let's get these baits chucked out. Always sort my drop length out. There we go. Check the line's not wrapped around the top eye. 
spot on, lead down, get the feet right, ah, loosen the mags a click, or two, there we go. That was good, no fluffing up, I might even go another click off next cast. We are in to the fish. So there we go, 36 centimetres. Not a bad fish, not the biggest I've had by a long way, but I'm very happy with my first place of 2024. Let's get it chucked back. Swam up a treat. So my hybrid lead rig slackened off a little bit a couple of times. Might just be the, the bit of swell we've got at the edge moving the lead. But you never know, it might be place number two. Let's, let's get this reeled in, have a look and see if we got anything. No, nothing on there. Time for some fresh bait anyway. So I've already been through my rigs and my bait. The rods I'm using today, I've got my competition performance. They're definitely my favorite rods for this kind of fishing. Probably use most of my trips when I come out down the Sussex beaches anyway. Oh, helicopter going over. And on this rod, I've got my Tronics Pro Banzai Mono Mag. And the other one, I've stuck on one of my 7HTs, a blue one with the mags. I do like using the mags on my reels when I'm fishing down the beach. Right, yeah, no, definitely nothing on here. So the battery in my GoPro just died while I was reeling that in. But there's definitely signs of fish out there. Let's have a closer look at this hook. You see, it looks like somebody's taken a little nibble out of that one. And if we look at my bottom hook, I'll just get that. Look at that. Definitely sign of fish activity. So maybe those little slackening offs I did have were moving the lead. Maybe that was a fish. If that keeps happening, I'm going to stick a grip lead on there because I found for experimenting over the years, if I'm missing fish, so I've got a little dog visitor here. If I'm missing fish with a plain lead, then sometimes sticking a grip lead on can lead to more hookups, even if you don't necessarily get as many bites. So I'll give this one another couple of chucks and if it keeps happening, grip lead's going on. So let's have a little look at how I'm baiting up with the lug and the razor as a cocktail. I've already got my lug worm there on the bait needle. And I've got my razor fish here out of its shell. And the way I do this, I'm not saying it's the only way, is I get my bait needle and I just stick it through the slightly firmer bit of the razor fish. And I'm going to slide that down the bait and needle. So then now it's parallel with the lugworm. And I'm going to get my bait elastic. And I'm going to bind those two together. Starting off, I'm just going to go down quite loosely to start with to get it so it's nice and neat. There we go. So they're now bound together and now I'm going to whip it on a bit more firmly so that that stays nicely in place once I've launched it out to sea. Up and down a good few times, so there we go. Get my rig, find the hook. I'm going to put this on the top hook of my two hook flapper. I get the rig, I get the hook there. So I've got the hook. Pop it in the top of the baiting needle. Hold the line nice and tight while I slide that round. And move the bait stop so it just touches the top of the bait. So there we go, all ready to go out. I'll stick a king rag on the bottom and that'll be ready for my next cast. Well, I thought I had a little touch on the torpedo rig again. Sadly, it's not a place this time, but it's still a fish. Little pin whiting, I'll get him unhooked 
give him some recovery time in the bucket of water and chuck him back. So what can I say? It's gone a bit slow. Not that it was ever fast. Um, the wind's picked up a little bit. The sea's not as nice and flat as it was, but it's still nice and calm. Uh, so just the one place and one whiting. It's now quarter to 12. So I've been here a few hours. I've still got plenty of time left. Um, but yeah, a bit, bit quiet really. There's quite a few people down here fishing now. Unsurprising really, because it's the first nice sunny day we've had for what feels like forever. Um, so yeah, we've still got a few hours, got to be in it to win it, as they say, for the lottery. So wish me luck. I'll keep trying, I'll keep putting baits out. I'm gonna get one reeled in now, see if there's anything on the end or if anything's had a go at the bait. This one's got the two at clip down with the hybrid lead on it. There's a bit of tide running now, that's moved, swung around a bit to the left. I cast it out slightly that direction, it's now slightly over there. So you'd ex still expect a little bit of movement with the hybrid lead, but certainly not as much as you would like a rolling plain lead. I don't think there's any fish on here. Um, I've had signs that the baits have been attacked a little bit when I've reeled in a couple of times without any fish, which is the way it goes sometimes. So yeah, we'll just keep putting the baits out, seeing how it goes. I've got my torpedo rig ready baited up to go out when I've got this one in, uh, with two rag loaded onto the hooks. I'll skip using the lug for the next cast and see what's up. Absolutely nothing on it. Got that leader not in the right place. I don't want to slice my thumb open. And I cast out. I've got one of the Tronix Pro Zen and tapered leaders on here. I use those on all my reels these days. But look at that. Something's definitely had a go at that bottom hook there. Completely munched it. What that's telling me is my hook might be a bit big. So I might switch out this rig which has got 1-0 Aberdeens on it or something with some smaller hooks. And also, I'm going to put a grip lead on there, grip lead on the new rig instead, just to see if that can help me get a hook up. So fingers crossed. Now, because I'm thinking distance is key, I'm going to make up a 1-0 bar rig with just one hook. I've already got the rig body made up. I made this up at home. It's a very simple little rig body at the bottom. We've got an imp, and just above that I've got a swivel held in place with a rig gum stop just above it. And at the top of the bead I've got a rig gum stop, a bead, half a spring, and then a swivel trapped between two beads with a size one swivel at the top. That's made out of £75 xenon. And I'm just going to stick a snood on here, which might take me a little while. So I'll bring you back when I've done that. So I've attached that snood to my little rig and stuck a six ounce grip lead on there. I only brought two fives with me, so I've gone up to a six on this one. And if you can see there, I've got a cascade swivel on the end of a long bit of line. Normally I'd put a mini snood clip on that, but I haven't got any with me. And this just clips up. I'll do it with one hand. That goes onto the imp at the bottom. And then the cascade swivel just tucks up on top of the rig body there and we've got that big looper line and that's about three feet long and let's see if I can get this out of distance get some face on this one fingers crossed well what can I say it's definitely quiet a lot of people fishing down that way just one person further that way I haven't seen anyone catch anything uh, so on that measure we're doing all right with a place and a whiting. I'm going to get another one of these reeled in, get it back out, and just keep plodding away. Tide's coming up quite a bit now. So another half hour I'll have to move up the beach a bit. But before I do that, fresh baits, and I'm definitely in need of a cup of tea. I've been down the beach now for about three hours and could do with a warm up. You can see I put my coat back on. The wind is now blowing straight in my face and it's picked up from this morning. 
Uh, we're expecting it to carry on picking up through the day. I think there's another blow coming tomorrow. So this is definitely the break in the weather to get out and hit the beach. Don't feel like there's a single thing on here, sadly. And we'll find out soon enough. That's right by the edge. Just pulling it through a bit of backwash. And uh, not a thing. Not a thing. Something's had a go at the rag though. There's, I think there's small things out there munching at the baits. Don't know what, but definitely something out there. Stealing a little bit, so I'll have to keep on reeling in regularly, making sure I've got bait on my hooks. No point having the having the, the rig out there if all your bait's gone. I think about two thirds of my worms have gone here, so definitely something having a munch. What I want is a place to be having a munch. One more will do me. I'm not greedy. I've still got a few hours before I've got to go back home before I head to the airport to pick my wife up. Her flight's been delayed. Good for me. Not so good for her. <laughs> oh, that was a cruel laugh. That was a cruel laugh. I've had what might have been a little tap on that mono bar rig I chucked out. With a big king rag on it. Nothing definite though. I'll just let this dog go past. I don't want my, my bait being munched, especially the one rig that's hanging on my tripod with a couple of hooks with worms on. And then I'll reel it in once we've got clear of danger. Don't want to hook real dogs. Dogfish is bad enough. <laughs> oh. Your dog's peeing on my staff. Just pissed all over my shelter. Delightful. Time to see if we got a fish. Just walk down a bit for this one because we've got some walkers coming past. We have got a fish. We have got a fish. What have we got? It's another one of them. So let's get this chap unhooked and send him back. To be fair, I'd thought I'd have caught a few more whites, and I've had quite a few now, but not as many as I might have expected. Since the water's coloured up and it's chopped up, I won't be surprised if we start bringing in a few more of these now. Let's see how we get on. So, whiting's gone back. Get the next rig out. Keep working, keep working. A guy down the beach just had a place, even though it's chopped up a bit and looking more like whiting and dog sea. There we go. Let's get this one whacked out. Place number two. Maybe that's your dinner just gone out. At least the sun's come back out. Hopefully the wind will die back down and warm back up a bit. My little fingers are pretty cold. It's obviously just getting me in the practice of Norway coming up, where I'm off to on Thursday. So there's a group of 10 of us going over, I think I might have said that already. And I'm going to be fishing with Wayne Hand, aka the Shore Hunter. And hopefully we'll be getting some big fish out. Probably bigger whiting if we catch whiting over there than the little tiddlers that have been coming out down the beach today. Keep an eye on them rods, so I'll just go and tighten that line up a little bit. My lead's settled now. There we go. So yeah, should be a good trip. I've had a look at the weather forecast. Sun, sun, sun forecast. Fingers crossed it stays like that. I thought we could sit here and watch the rods together for a bit. Not that there's much action to watch here today. But I was just sitting here wondering, are there any other women who've got a fishing YouTube channel based in the UK? Do you know of any? If you do, 
maybe put a comment on under the video and let me know their channel name. Or maybe I'm the only one. That would be nice if there was more than one of us out there doing this. Help promote women in the sport. Try and get more people into it. It's got to be good for everybody, really. And hopefully, my videos will help show that women are just as capable of fishing as all the blokes. It's quite unusual to see another woman out down the beach, but we do exist. There's a few of us out here in the world doing our thing, enjoying some fishing. Maybe if you know some women who go fishing, share a link to my channel, they might like watching, who knows. Unlike Pevensey, it hasn't been a dog fest. It hasn't been a rockling fest. It's actually been a bit of a nice break from pulling in double shots of dogs, double shots of rockling, dogfish and rockling, rockling and dogfish, occasional whiting thrown in. Of course, we've still got the whiting today, which isn't really unexpected, given that colour in the sea. And I was also expecting a dog or two, but they've not turned up, which is, a, to be honest, a bit of a relief. You're not going to believe it. I just had a bite. I actually had a bite. A bite on the right-hand rod. Now, sadly, it did look more like a whiting than a place, but we'll get it reeled in and have a look. Let us see if there's a fish on the end. Got a bit of distance to reel this in. Well, if there is something on here, then it is not very big. But then if it is a tiny little pin whiting, that would make sense, wouldn't it? That does feel very, very light though. I've got my bar rig baited up, ready to go back out. This bike came on the torpedo rig. Most of the fish I've had have been on the torpedo rig today. Just that one on the bar rig I caught just now. That one whiting. Let's see, have we got anything? We're at the edge. Oh, leader knot, leader knot. I always put my leader knot right at the right hand side of the spool. I don't want to slice my finger open, but look at that. Something's had a right munch on that ragworm. Look at that. Bottom hook, proper munched. So let's get these rigs switched over, cast it back out. So look at that. J juicy, juicy ragworms. Let's see if we can get a place on there. Time to get it cast out. Straight up into the sun. Let's hope that one brings me a fish. Well, we've done it. We have another lovely little place there. Let's get a better look at him. Nothing like as big as the first one, but nonetheless, very welcome. Accompanied by what I've been catching loads of down Pevensey. No, it's not a dogfish. It's a little rocklin. So I'll get these guys unhooked and get some more baits back out. Cool, way, another place. I've already got the rockling unhooked and he's sitting here in my bucket of water next to me. So let's have a look at how we're going to unhook this place. I'm going to use the through the gills method, which I showed off in one of the earlier videos that I made, but it's such a good technique. It's always worth going through again. So I'm going to leave my forceps and let me just angle the camera down a little bit. Hopefully you can see this. I've got the place here on my box and I'm very gently going to slide those forceps up under the gills and out through the mouth. Come on, relax fish. That's it, it's getting there. He doesn't want to open his mouth. Come on, open wide, that's it. And I'm going to put the line, the snood line, 
through the end of the forceps. There's just a little loop there because I need a bit of play, a little bit of slack in this. I'm going to gently slide that back. So now I've got the line here in my hand, sliding through. Let me keep that loop there. And I'm going to pull very gently the end with the hook. Just get the bait out of the way. Try and turn that hook. Oh, that's got it popped. And then I'm going to get my forceps. And I'm going to hold that hook. I can just see it there. Right, let's get that turned a little bit more. That's got it. Popped it out. And then we're going to pull that back up through that pl gill plate, just very gently there. And there we have the hook come out. And you can see there, no bleeding from that fish whatsoever. And I'll put him in my bucket to give him a few minutes to recover and then we'll chuck him back. So it's definitely worth practicing that method. It was a little bit tricky there. That fish was a bit, un, a bit a bit tense. It's always a bit hard getting through the gills if the fish is a bit tense. Can't blame it really. It was sitting on someone's fishing tackle box thinking, where on earth am I? I'm not in the sea. So give that a wipe down, chuck him back in a few minutes when he's recovered. There we go. As you can see, definitely no blood there. The hook came out really well. Let's get this guy back. Yep, all gone. Let's hope for some more. So I've had little taps on both rods, so maybe things are looking up. Let's get the left one reeled in first and see if we've got anything. Maybe you can watch the other one for me while I'm reeling in. Let me know if I've got a bite. Well, let's see. I think I've just got my bait back. Yeah. Something that's had a right munch on that though. Ragworm on the top hook. Look at that. Something has definitely taken a like into that. Virtually nothing left. Whereas I put straight razor fish on the other hook absolutely untouched so that's clearly not doing the business today so let's get this chuck back out with my mono bar rig on there check the drop length that's spot on Right, ready to go. Right, time to check the other one. Definitely well gripped. It's popped out. Still got a bit of weight on here though. This one feels much more promising. I think there's going to be a fish on this. And I'm hoping it might be another place. The bite I had that I saw and it was just a very gentle little knock. So kind of a classic place bite. But we know there's plenty of rocklin and whiting out in the sea today. So let's just walk down a bit closer, see if we've got anything. Looks like we have another rocklin. There we go, not quite as big as the last one, 
But nonetheless, a welcome fish. Well, I'm just on my last cast. It's time for me to get packed up, head back home, unload my car, and then head off up to Gatwick Airport. But I've just had a bite on the right-hand rod. I don't think it was a place bite, but you never know. So I'm gonna just close off now. If I got a fish, I'll show you what I catch when I reel it in. But I just wanna say thanks ever so much for watching. And if you've made it this far, you'll see that I actually had a couple of plays Given the conditions, I'm pretty pleased with that. The water's pretty cloudy and we had so many whiting I lost count. I showed a few of them up to the camera and a few rocklin. So yeah, nice little mixed bag. And the best place of the day was the one I caught first, 36 centimetres. And off it went to live another day. So thanks everyone. Well, there we go. Little double shot to finish off the session. Still got the other one to reel in. Remember, coming up, I'm off to Norway. So hopefully there'll be some really great videos coming out of that trip. And please do subscribe. So you'll see when those videos come up. And I hope you enjoy watching them. Cheers, everybody. Bye for now.